So let's study the differences between apoptosis and necrosis. So the first point under apoptosis is so apoptosis is a programmed cell death and for necrosis it is a premature cell death. So the second point is apoptosis is a highly regulated and timely event and for necrosis necrosis is an unregulated random event. So the third point under apoptosis is so it is genetically controlled while necrosis is not genetically controlled. So let's move on to the fourth point. So apoptosis is a pre-planned cell death pathway while necrosis is not a pre-planned cell death pathway. So the fifth point under apoptosis is so shrinkage of cells occur during apoptosis while swelling of cells occur during necrosis. So apoptotic cell deaths are usually beneficial to the organisms while for necrosis while necrotic cell deaths are always detrimental to the organisms. Now let's move on to the next point. So membrane blebbing occurs during apoptotic cell death. So no membrane blebbing but the membrane gets disrupted during necrotic cell death. The next point. So chromatin condensation is a hallmark of apoptosis. While no chromatin condensation occurs during necrosis. So the next point under apoptosis is. So nucleus gets fragmented during apoptosis. And for necrosis the nucleus gets disorganized. Now apoptotic bodies are formed during apoptotic cell death while no such necrotic bodies are formed during necrosis. So no inflammation occurs in the surrounding tissues for apoptotic cell deaths but for necrosis cause severe inflammation in the surrounding tissues. During necrosis severe inflammation occurs to the surrounding tissues. So apoptosis is an active process and hence it requires energy from the ATP. While necrosis is a passive process and hence it do not require any ATP. So the integrity of the lysosomes are preserved in apoptotic cell death. So the integrity of lysosomes are compromised during necrotic cell death lysosome leakage occurs for necrosis. So for apoptosis phagocytosis of the cell remnants are done by the adjacent cell or macrophages but for so for necrosis, the phagocytosis of the cell remnants are always done by the macrophages. So the integrity of the mitochondria is usually lost during the initial phases of apoptosis. While the integrity of mitochondria is usually maintained during the initial phases of necrotic cell death. So the next point under apoptosis is. So apoptosis is a caspase dependent cell death pathway. While necrosis is a caspase independent cell death pathway. So the next point, so externalization of phosphatidylserine from inner to outer leaflet of plasma membrane occurs for apoptosis while no such flipping of plasma membrane occurs during necrotic cell death. So DNA fragmentation is pre-lytic in apoptosis while the DNA fragmentation is post-lytic in necrosis. So for apoptosis, release of cytochrome C and AIF from the mitochondria to the cytoplasm of cell occurs. While no such events are reported in necrosis. So the next point under apoptosis is. So the pH of the cells changes to acidic during apoptosis. While there is no change in the pH of the cells during necrosis. So let's move on to the next point. So apoptotic cell death occurs in individual cells. While for necrosis, usually a group of cells undergo necrotic cell death. So these were the differences between apoptosis and necrosis. So I would like to end the video with a nice little diagram. This is a healthy cell which is undergoing necrosis and apoptosis. For necrosis, there is an increase in the cell volume, loss of plasma membrane integrity and leakage of the cellular contents. And for apoptosis, there is cell shrinkage, plasma membrane blebbing, and formation of apoptotic bodies. So these were the differences between apoptosis and necrosis. Thank you.